Hi, everybody, and welcome to the RHAP BNB for episode four of Survivor 46. My name is Mike Bloom, and here I am to say bye bye to Banu. It was basically the length of an Oscar winning feature, and people are certainly saying this man may or may not have put forward an Oscar winning performance, but from my perspective, he is authentically himself, and he went out doing as such as we are here to finally mourn Banu here on Survivor 46. Maybe talk about some other stuff along the way as well with our lovely panel. Let me welcome in, of course, the co-owner of the b, &B. Liana, if you had the chance in a challenge to yell something as you jumped off a platform, what would you yell? You know, it's okay. So first, before I answer the question, I did see Charlie's tweet about that, that mm -hmm. it was like, be silly, be goofy. So he was inspired by Steve Carell from the 40 year old virgin yelling Kelly Clarkson. So I almost feel like I have to pick some kind of celebrity. I feel like Shaka Khan would just be fun to say as you jump. There so we go. Maybe that's what I would come go through. With. Mayhem Miller. There we go. Yes. That'd be your shout out. <laughs> well, we are talking with much like Shaka Khan herself, a living legend today <laughs> from Survivor 45. And listen, we got to watch Banu wriggle his way through figuring out that he was the one to go. And once upon a time, we saw something wriggle her way down her gut when she ate the worm and did so much else on Survivor 45. So excited to welcome to the B&B, &B, Kendra McCory. Hi, Kendra. Hey! <laughs> your intros, like, your creative mind, Mike, just never ceases to blow my mind. I'm so happy to be here. And, uh, yeah, really excited to talk about this week because... Woo! Banu! What? Uh, you know, I did like the astrology podcast about him yeah. and I just saw all this Scorpio. I was like, oh my God, the intensity is just going to pour through the screen. And was I right? Oh my gosh, Banu. Oh, I just definitely fell through, fell through it with him um, through the screen. So bye bye, Banu. Yeah, well, we are certainly going to have a lengthened <laughs> eulogy for him. Uh, but first, Kendra, I would love an update from you because people may not realize, but you have uh, brought a piece of the authentic island lifestyle into your regular lifestyle here as you have made the move out west. You just can't get it up at the beach. What's going on with you? Yeah, I was really sad about getting voted out. And you know, it's just like, I'm just going to move back to an island, live in the middle of the jungle. So I'm literally in the middle of the jungle of Hawaii. I live in Maui. I won this on reward. This is my mosquito net. Um, yeah, Jeff actually came. He drone dropped it off for me um, through Amazon um, into the jungle. But yeah, I'm living off grid, living my dreams of an off grid life. And uh, I'm in my little hut right now. And life is good. I'm just being a farm being an outdoor farm girl and uh i don't have to uh compete for food which is great but other than that it's pretty much survivor it's pretty much survivor yeah it feels like liana i mean we had cody and geo sort of be like the ones to break the ground for survivors living in hawaii now we have kendra there is this like mm -hmm. slowly going to become more and more of a hey you're not going to live out in fiji but it sort of is like a nice middle ground between the u.s and the island proper Mm hmm. I love that. I love that you're embracing it. It's like you had the taste in Fiji and now you're like, this, this is it. I love this. I want this. Give me that mosquito net. Absolutely. It's, um, it's amazing. And like Fiji is only like a five hour flight. So I'm like, am I going to go back? It would be really crazy to go back there and like, be like, I'm well fed. People are not against me. <laughs> It's this reality here, but no, it's awesome. Um, yeah, I was really, I was literally like, can I just be the welcoming committee for 46? Like, just give me rice. I can stay on the bamboo. Like, I'm just, ha I like being outside. I'm an outdoor cat. Ow. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, Kedra, you may have been a great welcoming committee for this particular cast because, listen, I, I don't want to necessarily I feel like label I you. beyond the cast. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to necessarily label you as a wackadoodle, but I do feel like this cast is like very toned to that sort of goofball energy that you're bringing. Give me your thoughts on this season so far. Okay, the wackadoodle energy when Q was like wackadoodles win, I'm like, I need a Q to tell me that wackadoodles win because like I definitely, um, I just I am a wackadoodle for sure. Like I'm also like you know can get the job done. I have 
like a good brain, but like I'm a happy person and I don't like, be silly and goofy and whatever. But season man, I was like, this is gonna be an emotional season. I'm giving I was like in the beginning, I'm like, it's giving me hot mess and like, oh what I would have they were like, oh, 45 or 46, and I had to do 45. And so grateful I did 45, but like, I'm just like, it's it's hard to not imagine yourself out there with these people. And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> it would have been really good for their money if I was, or, oh, all I can think about is how annoying I would be with Soda and Tevin singing every day. Like, I cannot stop singing. Uh, I'm in the mood. To win some food like every single day every time i'm making food i sing that and i literally would have driven everyone crazy with soda and tevin because like i sing dance like you want to sing you want to make up songs that's like all i do all day anyways by myself so i was just like put me on nami tribe please <laughs> I think a lot of people this season are saying, put me on Nami Tribe, please, to be fair. Yeah, I'm be like, I'm in Iyanu. <laughs> That's where I want to go. <laughs> so and look, true. Then, uh, Hunter would have had a new target. <laughs> Not instead of soda, it would have been you for all the singing. <laughs> oh my God. It would It would have, the man would have, he, we would have driven him crazy. It would have been too much. <laughs> too much wackadoodle energy. <laughs> So much. Well, yeah. well, let's talk about the titular wackadoodle here because just like last week, we got to say, like, this episode begins and ends with Banu. I'm still trying to honestly wrap my head around, like, okay, did I like last week or this week better? Because again, I really do feel like it felt like a combined three hour <laughs> farewell to this man between him supposed yeah. to be going last time, gets this minor saving grace, turns out to only be a short term one as Yanu inevitably loses and he's voted out. And I've certainly seen a lot of surprisingly, I would say like polarizing commentary one way or the other as to like whether or not they liked how much time was dedicated to Banu, how they thought about him overall. Suffice it to say, Liana, we talked about, I guess, the first half of Banu's long farewell. What did you think about the second half this week? Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of the things that I had said last week was that if this was like the Banu centric episode and then it was over, I'm okay with that. But as you said, it was almost a three hour episode of the Banu episode because he ends up getting saved due to Randon's medivac. So that became a little bit overwhelming. And I think you kind of start thinking about like, okay, we got it what's next and so i'm hoping now this was a fun little ride that we went on but the banu coaster is over and i think it's time for the season to take off in a different direction yeah kendra what did you think i mean in so many ways you know this being your first season since you played but getting to see so much of those early days dedicated i mean you were someone who didn't go to tribal council until right before mergatory happened but did you think it was too much banu even though he only lasted four episodes yeah, uh, <laughs> I was like, I feel like we really, <laughs> I feel like we were really able to get like a sense of his character. I did really like the storytelling around like him going through like the grief of his game, um, like the acceptance part, the anger. Like I thought that was like really actually cool and beautiful and moving, but like on its own. But with everything else, it was kind of just like. There's like so many, there's other storylines happening. I know there's more shit happening. So it was like kind of hard for me to be like, okay, I want to see other things. I want to see different dynamics because like those dynamics are happening. You know, it's not like you have thousands of hours to choose from. And like, not to say don't like, I think there's still a way to like include Banu's story and include who he is without the whole thing being about that so yeah i did like the storytelling but then i feel like it didn't hit at the end with his departure but like i feel like it didn't hit as hard as it could have because we are already kind of like okay like it's predictable we know what's happening how can we kind yeah. of like make this a little bit easier to, to digest yeah, it's a difficult trade-off, right? Because, like, I wouldn't want them to try to build up that it could be somebody else. Of like, oh, no. you don't know. When we saw after the challenge, Q, Tiffany, and Kenzie all get confessionals that say Banu's got to go. And we know he doesn't have a vote, so he can't play a shot in the dark. And the idol's already been found. Like, I like that they didn't try to manufacture anything. And I actually, to your point, yeah. I honestly loved the camp scene. I mean, it was... A little tough to watch at certain yeah. points but like to actually see it be digested yeah. as him going through the five stages of grief ending with acceptance as he's 
dead, laying there on the ground, quite literally, as they finished the scene, I think was so interesting to watch. Because again, in a culture, I feel like that is so predicated on blind sides, especially nowadays. Like, it feels so rare that we get someone walking forward being like, yep, this is the end of me and going through that entire process. I do wish it was sort of traded off for other things going on. It, it can even be outside of Yanu because it seems like Yanu was really just concentrated on Banu. You know, I talked about this last week, but even this week, there's more secret scenes about like, Sega loses, so Ben decides to go out fishing and everyone loves it. There's a lot of like Ben stuff in the secret scenes, honestly, that he has kind of been relegated to as a result of winning so much. But at the same time, like, I was so entertained by Banu. <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's tough to be like, cut the Banu stuff. When, when he starts the episode by being like, uh, oh, great, I'm saved. Uh, by the way, I did tell everybody else that you were the masterminds of this tribe. Was that bad? Like, that's so ridiculous that there's, again, a lot of polarization around what he's doing and what he ended up doing. But it's it's tough for me to completely lambast an episode, but it's also like, what Banu is giving is so absolutely ridiculously, ludicrously wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, so I think... Rare. Like, it's so rare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think, like, I'm looking at all the Banu content, and I think that there's definitely stuff here that you could cut, like the Kenzie Banu interaction where she snap, snaps at him and then has to, like, go apologize. Like, to me, it's like, okay, that that maybe could have been cut. Like, I didn't feel like that was absolutely necessary to see, especially when you know you're going to be spending so much time with Banu, knowing this sort of, especially the five stages of grief that we've already talked about is going to happen. Like, definitely see that. I want to see that. Uh, But maybe then you can cut it in other ways to sort of limit that down. So I think it's really about a balance, especially because, again, I'm thinking like, all right, this is done now. What's next? And I almost want more set up for those future storylines that are going to dominate, I think, the next couple episodes. Yeah, it's interesting, Kendra. Uh, I would almost compare it to your season a bit in that I do think this is more unbalanced than what you had in the first stage of your season. But I always looked at that first, those first few episodes pre-swap as like, this is chapter one of Survivor 45. It's the Lulu downfall. Yeah. And then we can sort of move on to unfortunately what ended up becoming the Bello downfall. To Liana's point, I am hopeful because, listen, the past three weeks, four weeks, we spent two hours on a Jelinski boot. We spent two hours on a chest boot and we spent a, com- a spent a combined three episodes on a Banu boot. Like, okay, these were definitely the three unfortunate weakest members of the tribe. They're gone now. I'm hopeful that Yanu keeps winning, not only to have these other tribes go to tribal council, but also to like be able for to have us move on and get to know and see everyone else besides the six people we've been seeing the past four weeks. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like there are little snippets of storylines that we are going to see. I am super hopeful because like, I love this cast. Like I am so into them. Like I think they're hilarious. Like they're so raw and real. Um, And so, yeah, I'm really excited. I, I'm praying for a loss, like a Segan and Nami loss. I'm over. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, Actually, with Sega and like everything that's going on with like the the the, battle, the beware advantage, um, and I really want to in like Maria's extra boat and how that's all gonna work out. Like, I just want to see the drama there. Like, I want to see them in Tribal Council so bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, oh my god, Sega's yeah. Sega's weird because I feel like Sega like has these really interesting personalities, but they're all sort of laid back and fairly chill. But then all of their content is around this idol and this beware advantage. So we got to talk about this, Liana, the the weaponizing of rehiding the beware advantage, but then also subsequently everyone realizing that was the case after they, I'm pretty sure, dug to the core of the earth, which is just filled with ants. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. They know it's not going to be hidden that deep. You know what I mean? So you have to consider a universe where someone hid the the advantage. So then I'm like, okay, Jem, like what was it always your plan to like plant it on someone else? Like what was what was your long term game plan here? That's what I would have liked to have seen. I mean, it made it for great television, but I'm just trying to think of like, okay, it's fun. What's the strategy? I mean, you don't have to have a strategic reason behind it. You can just want to cause chaos, which I'm also 100% in favor of. Yeah, I mean, Kendra, obviously the idols in your camps and your season worked a little bit differently, but 
if you ever found one of these, would you put yourself in that gem headspace of like, we're, we're just keep winning. There's really nothing to do. Feeling bored. Might send my tribe on a wild goose chase that ends up having them covered in ant bites. Uh, I might have. If Bruce was bothering me a little bit much that day, I would have been <laughs> like, here we go. Set them on a wild goose chase. Um, no, because I would just like be really, like just thinking about the consequences. Okay, they're going to, and then, like, yeah. heightening paranoia in an already paranoid game. Um, and then, say, one of my alliance members finds it. And then they don't think they have a vote or something. Like, I forget exactly. Did, did she, does she, does Maria think that she doesn't have a vote right now? So, initially, I, I think so. They were like, oh, Maria found a beware advantage. But then I think the more that people started to realize, oh, this could have been planted by somebody, the more they sort of, now I'd imagine, like, if they if they did have one, the producer may have stepped in to be like, okay, just so you know, like, when you get up there, you can write something down. Because uh, I don't yeah. think we've ever seen someone purposely abstain from voting, thinking that they had their vote removed. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, I don't know. I feel like... Yeah, maybe if I was having a wild hair that day and was being like, you know what? These people are ki like killing me. Like, go. Like, just sit for entertainment myself. You get kind of bored. Yeah, you're winning. You're getting kind of bored. Like, I don't blame Jem. I think it's hilarious. And the fact that she's just sitting there, she's like, yeah. Somebody could have planted it. I was cracking up. I was like, keep digging. I was just dying. Oh, I think it's so funny. I think it's like, just for me, Just it's just hilarious just to watch people do that. So if not for your own entertainment, like whatever, fuck a strategy, just have fun. Like I definitely do like relate to her in that, in that sense, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's like, okay, but what, what's going to happen now? It could, is it going to come back and bite you in the ass? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, so, okay. So to go back and just to clarify the logistics and Mike, you might have an answer to this. I, is it technically the scroll that was attached to the box that said that you lose your vote and you'll get instructions well, or did the actual beware advantage say, right? This, like does, 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 does it say it at every step of the beware advantage, right? It's like, okay, now burn yeah. the candle until then you don't have your vote. Okay. <laughs> now grab this scroll until then you don't have your vote. As just like a constant reminder. I think it's once yeah. you grab the beware advantage, once okay. you unwrap okay. that, I think that's when you sort of break the seal. And uh, I don't okay. know if there's a certain step in the process where you officially lose your vote. Okay. Yeah. And since te technically, Jem already lost her vote. If someone yes. else found it, they would not also lose their vote, but they might not know that until production told them, no, it's okay, you can vote. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I'm wondering if there's like a world where like somebody does find the beware advantage kind of like in secret. Say if Maria found it in secret and kind of in Doug and kind of figured out that it was fake and like pretended that she lost her vote. Like, I feel like that could be, you mm. know a cool way to spin it, like do it like a double spin on it and get like, try to get information that way or work a blind side somehow. I'm like, okay, there's different ways in which maybe this could have worked out to be like pretty cool. And who knows? Well, they're all kind of finding it together, but yeah. And like, I was thinking about it. I'm like, okay, like all the different possibilities here. And Oh God, I would be so mad if I had dug up so many, like, the anger. Also, I probably would have gone full just mode and started eating them. Truly. Like, I've had frozen ants before. They taste like minty grape sweet tarts. Sp oh. That's a very specific taste for ants. I would have thought they tasted like nothing. Yeah. Frozen ants taste like minty grape sweet tarts. They're delicious. It Maybe it was like the vodka at four in the morning with these ice fishermen. <laughs> That was making her own taste that way, but um, I was like, I'll take a cup. At the time, I was like, I'm vegetarian, I can't eat an ant. And then I was like, drinking the the vodka with my uncle's <laughs> ice fishing. And then I was like, you know what? Those sound pretty good right now. We're all just like taking handfuls, chopping out logs, eating ants. I was like, yeah. So maybe I would have just had a little snack time, brunch, island I brunch, like, baby. I feel like the past two minutes was the equivalent of us digging under that tree of like, okay, oh, we're finding out more. Oh, we're finding out a lot more about this. What? What's going on here? <laughs> oh my gosh. Any story that like starts with, well, I don't know. It might have been the vodka with the ice fisherman. Like that's a story I want to hear. <laughs> People are like, how'd you get cast on driver? It's like, you just talk about ice fisherman, drinking vodka and eating ants. Like that's how you do it. You know? <laughs> I have to Dude. talk about, I have to talk about the, other, the other piece of Sega that we got. There was one scant scene 
besides not not I guess emphasis on ant there, besides the idol hunting, idol blaming, like how can Mariah not jump? This legitimately confounds me for several reasons. I think just as like a human being, I, I can't honestly imagine someone who lacks that amount of coordination to not know how to we talk about like alleged performances. Oh, is so and so acting like I thought this was a gag that she jumped and she could not go maybe three inches off the ground. B, girl won an episode of Wipeout. Didn't just lose, jumped across several obstacles to win a cash prize. Where is this coming from? What the hell? Okay, so maybe it's because she doesn't have so much spring that she was able, like, maybe she doesn't have so much momentum that maybe that's why she could win Wipeout. But, like, I was watching that and I was just like, this is, like, make it make sense. I don't understand how her feet are not, like, you're going for it and you're just, like, oh my, I was dying. I was dying. It was so funny. It was interesting, too, because she would skip. Like, after she would do it well, she would skip and get higher <laughs> vertical than if she was using both her feet at the same time. Maybe, so maybe, like, maybe it's like a happening? psychosomatic thing. Maybe she's psyching herself up that, like, if you disguise the jump as a double leg skip, do you think that would yeah. help? Like, imagine yeah. skipping, but you raise both your feet at the same time, and that's how you sort of soft launch your way into jumping. <laughs> Yeah, but even then, for the hitting the key or, like, grabbing the key thing, a skip is totally fine. Just, like, tell her, just skip. Just skip up. <laughs> Don't yeah. skip out, skip up. And then maybe that would have worked. Oh, my God, it was fantastic. I was really hoping that they were going to have to, like, grump, ju jump and grab something. I was like, hey, we need it. I want to see this in action. But maybe, hopefully in the future, maybe this, like, maybe it'll be, like, a, like a deep toe thing. Yeah. You know, oh. where she like, oh, you, comes you know, back. Mm -hmm. thing. yeah, maybe it'll come back and Mariah's like, maybe loses because she can't jump or maybe she takes the W because she can, she what would, realizes what that she can me? jump. Okay. Yeah. She so whoever, <laughs> could you imagine whoever, okay, for this challenge, whoever stays closest to the ground wins. Go. All right, Mariah, <laughs> this is your challenge. <laughs> I mean, they're running out of ideas, okay, Mike? I think it's totally fine. <laughs> Don't critique. Uh, it's yeah. just so amazing that this is like... Oh, I mean, amazing. To your point, Kendra, it's like the real D's toe thing of like, okay, this kind of came out of nowhere. And you think in the moment, it's just like some random thing. But when she showed it, like it truly was, I would say, masterful. Astounding. Yeah. I've never seen... Yeah. I've seen turtles that have higher vertical leaps than Mariah does. I, I did Truly not think it's unreal. <laughs> I, and I, I am, I do wonder, like maybe they had a grab the key element in it and they kind of got rid of it. Cause they're like, we do not want another Maria situation where like, she just sinks her tribe in this challenge. Cause she can't jump. Oh God. No. They would have included it. <laughs> they would have been a sucker for that. Plus, to save Yano, I'm sure they would have kept it if it was already there. But, uh, but yeah, I do anticipate this is some kind of foreshadowing that's going to show up at some point later. Yes, unlike the shadow that she casts on the ground when she jumps about an inch <laughs> off of it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do, I do want to throw something else out here. I want to okay. circle back to Banu, as all good things do in Survivor 46, because. Absolutely. I'm sure I am. I'm sure I am uh, not the first person to make this comparison, but it's been percolating in my head. Uh, I've been reading the oral history of The Office, just like in my casual uh, reading, and I can't get this idea out of my head. I think Banu is the survivor version of Michael Scott. For I have many... seen this. Really? Okay. I've seen this, like somebody said, like I saw like one meme that like, Banu is Michael Scott. Continue. I love well, this. I think for a number of reasons. First, the quote, I don't need a million dollars. I want to win a million hearts is like, that is Michael Scott to a T. If you cut him open, that is the words that come out of him is this idea of it doesn't matter to me, like the position that I'm in. I don't want to be your boss. I also want to be your friend. Like Michael Scott was always about this idea of emotional fragility and oftentimes his need to please people got him in a lot of trouble when it contested with the fact that no, he was their superior. And to be honest, Michael Scott is a cringy character. He is doing things that make everybody pretty much recoil to varying degrees. 
And I'll be honest, I think Banu on his knees in front of Tiffany saying, please help me, is sort of like the Scots tots of Survivor, where it's yes. almost a little over the line. It's all like, okay, this is too much. We took things a bit too far in that direction. <laughs> it is so Michael, Con Michael Scott coded. I cannot even. Also, that, oh, that scene where Tiffany's like, get up. Get up. I will not speak to you on the ground. I'm like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> the camera people are probably like, oh, like, what the fuck? Like, get, get over here. You see this? I'm like, that is in, like, I. I don't know what I would do in that situation. Actually, I'd probably get down on my knees and, like, hold his hands, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, it's okay. It's not okay, but, like, you gotta go. <laughs> I can't help you. <laughs> I'm God sure tried to help you yesterday, then you missed the buoy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. Look, God giveth, God taketh right. away. Okay, you gotta gotta take advantage of this. Um, oh I do God. love the idea though that the ca the the camera people like are watch. They're like, I they know that they are watching good TV. You know what I mean? Like they know that they're capturing something unique in that moment. Yeah, absolutely. I had I remember that like experiencing that. I had like a whole word monologue. It was like longer than that. It was like a truly, it was a thing. And they were just like, ah, like, ah, oh, this shit is good. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I don't, I can't even think a thought right now. I'm so hungry. Uh, but yeah, they love that shit. You could smell it on yeah. them. They're just like, this is good. <laughs> the, uh, the other comparison to the the million hearts that reminds me of the Michael Scott quote that's like would you rather be feared or loved yeah. and then it's like a both yeah. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me like yeah. that's Bonu like that is something Bonu would say the other thing that really pinged for me in this particular episode was coach Chu coming mm -hmm. through and actually saying okay this is how you need to act to travel council to the extent where they were acting out a scene where Q was pretending to be Jeff and Banu's like, nope, everything's good. You know, como si, como sa. What's going on with you, propsty baby? Like trying to play it as low key as he can. That feels like textbook Michael Scott, right? Like that was the pilot episode, I think was like him pretending to fire Pam, like trying to run through all these simulations. I, it's so unconventional for a survivor. Like, in a game where people are trying to cut each other's throats in the pursuit of a million dollars, here is somebody that's like, all right, if, if we have to take you to emerge, I need to teach you not to answer a three word question with a 300 word answer. So come on, Banu, you're going to the school of Q. Mm -hmm. Who is Q from the office in this scenario? Like that is like he Jim is, but Jim. I feel like Jim would be messing with Michael. But like, who is Q from the office in this scenario with Banu as Michael Scott? Uh, I so I think because I've thought this through as well. I'm of a couple minds here. I've, I've been trying to think about who's Dwight. Okay. Mm -hmm. My first thought was Liz. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's the glasses. But honestly, my second thought was Q. I, I like. I think that Q is somebody who is like incredibly intense uh, and someone who like varies is very yeah. specific, but like is very He's capable like, at the job that he does. Right. Like Dwight is a little yeah. off social and wants to help. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And like, and is the most fiercely committed to the Michael Scott. Like nobody else is really giving him the time of day. Everyone else has given up on him, but I feel like Q is kind of that, a different version of that Dwight who is like, ready to sit down with Michael and be like, okay, we're going to talk through this negotiation right now so you can land this sale. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I could also, I could see Q like last week when he was doing the whole my road is the hardest thing. That, <laughs> oh that's Dwight. My. That's Dwight coded. So I could see that. That is so Dwight. Oh my God. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Anyways, we're not going to talk about last week's episode, but I was just like, Q, come on. I love Q. I'm like, that is, he's just, he's, he's doing great. He's doing great. <laughs> I, I was trying to think of some other ones. I feel like uh, Ben is Creed. That's the one I really nailed it on. It's just like, here's this guy who says random things, has a oh. musical background. <laughs> He's been growing mung beans out there. Like, honestly, yeah. I would not be surprised if he's like, this drawer does rock. Look at these mung beans. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the other thing too, for Bono with Michael Scott is like when Bono got the hug from Jeff at the end, like that's something Michael Scott would like have wanted a hug from Jeff. You know what I mean? So it just, that totally fits for me. I love this comparison. It, it, Where, oh, go ahead. No, please. I'm just thinking about with the non vote, what is everyone's feelings about the non vote, especially with like, moving forward do you think production steps in if there is actually an alternate plan for people to vote even if that you know what i mean does yeah. that does like production it's step in there are people going to use that to like make a move in the future because like i i don't know i felt like he deserved to have his name written down like i was also like sad about that i was like like at least let him see his name get written down and like have the full ex survivor experience i feel like it was almost like gypped not being able to like have that send off mm. i don't know i didn't like it maybe yeah not a quit you know like maybe they wanted to save her of like uh listen they're gonna say some pretty bad things about you in these voting confessionals so like let's just have them say really nice things about you in front of you it's it's odd it is weird and i have to imagine this is more of an exception rather than a rule even though kendra i mean you were uh, you know, you were cast to vote technically for a tribal council where no votes were cast. So this is sort of like the same thing, right? Where it's like, okay, everyone verbally agrees yeah. to this outcome. And so here's what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a little different with like a, like a quit because like, ah, I don't know, maybe it's not that different because Banu couldn't, had no agency at that point. But like, I guess I just wonder for like moving forward, if there is a scenario like that, that are they still like, people are going to be like, yeah, we're all voting this person. Like, I don't know. I, I guess, mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess I just didn't like it. I was like, I want Banu to get written down. And also I want to see those voting confessionals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, why not film it at least? And also because, you know, we talk about the ceremony of tribal council. It's ceremonious anyway. Exactly. So like go through the ceremony. And if for some reason you want to maybe if it's like a timing issue that they wanted to just like cut that out, like, okay, then maybe just cut and say, you know, the whatever fourth person voted out Survivor 46 Bonnie. Like, and then you don't have to read all the votes. You just, but just like, I, st I also want the ceremony. Yeah. I want, I want the votes. Yeah, and to your point. Me earlier, too. Kendra, also, Yanu doesn't have fire. Yeah. Let them yeah. hang out at tribal council for a little bit. Like, let them get warm. Come on. They're probably like, can we, like, like <laughs> imagine Yanu's just sitting there like, let's make this as long as possible so we can, like, yeah. get a little warm, sit by the fire a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. hang out outside of camp. Um, I could imagine myself being, like, scooting my... <laughs> my chair forward if i'm on yanu <laughs> at that point being like <laughs> yeah just yeah. still not sure what's going on today and just <laughs> trying to long tribal council so i can be warm and buy a fire yeah. and not back at camp hey, Bob, remember everything i said before about like don't talk as much at tribal council it's okay you know what tell your whole life story tell me more about the thatch roof okay we want to hear I it <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's the other thing, too, that I've seen a lot of critiques on and I agree with the keeping the flint from the losing tribe. It's just yeah. seeming to create the steamroll that's just like, who cares? Literally, who cares? Just it's, give not it to them. it's not fun. It's not fun. It's not fun. Not fun. Not fun. Let him have it. I, I will say I was looking back through Survivor history. And I'd love to do a little bit of an exercise here before we get into some of our typical B and B fare because there actually have been some like as much as we've talked about first boots and where does Jelinski stack up, there have been some pretty legendary fourth boots as well. Ironically enough, um, Liana, can you please, in your preference, rank these four fourth boots? Drew Christie. Okay. Yes. Russell Swan. Okay. Jatia. Oh. And Banu. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. That's like a pretty stellar list of big care, like big pre merge characters. I think if I'm ranking, I'm probably Jatia first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then I'm trying to not let the recency bias in. I'm going to say Drew Christie, then Banu, then Russell Swan. Wow, the order. only two-time player on the list is in last place, much like his tribe was. 
Oops. Because I feel like it's not really about Russell Swan per se. It's like the story is not really about him in that moment. I don't know. I, I just don't, f I feel like, because then you think of the Malcolm and Denise like storyline flourishing yeah. after that. Whereas like Drew Christie is about Drew Christie. Like Jatia mm. is about the brains, but it's about Jatia. Banu is about, yeah, it's about Yanu, but it's about Banu. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Kendra, what about you? Do you have any ranking in mind? I think I, yeah, Jatia first for me, for sure. And then I'm going to switch Banu mm -hmm. with Drew Christie, and I think I follow the same. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's tough. I, because I feel like Jatia also really represents, like, the Brains tribe overall as yeah. well. And she certainly contributed mm -hmm. to, like, the chaos of it, but, like, this idea that, oh, this person dumps the rice into the fire in a fit of anger and still doesn't get voted out was, like, survivor kagayan in an image uh and so the fact that like she serves as so much more than who she actually was i think probably does give her the top spot yeah i'm really between uh, i don't know i kind of love the poetry of russell swad where it's like you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain even though i think he lasted longer his first time than his second time of like oh i'm so glad he almost died here he is coming back oh wait no, we probably sure know. Bye bye. <laughs> the bye elements bye, might have had the right thing in mind. Thank you. Uh, up there, uh, and then yeah, God, it really is a murderer's row there. Because I think Drew mm -hmm. Christie and Bonnie were actually yeah. probably two sides of the same coin of like someone who probably would ordinarily be in a good situation, but kind of was part of this four episode arc where they are just hoisted by their own petard because of their personality. They are putting themselves continuously in danger and just screwing over their game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. All right, Liana. <laughs> I have to ask. Before the season started, how did you think Banu was going to do? What was your preseason prediction for Banu? <laughs> okay. So I believe officially, although it's not official, unofficially officially, I had Banu as the first boot from Yanu. Wow. Okay. So I was unfortunately not very high on his chances early. So I said Banu was pre-jury and that he burst onto the survivor beach as a ball of energy ready to play. But that same zeal led him to re-injuring, re-injure his shoulder in the mm. immunity challenge, although not bad enough for a medivac. Uh, but then he has a full on breakdown because of the injury. He feels bad that he let his tribe down, which spirals into frantically idol hunting which further puts him on the outs and this panicked behavior confuses the rest of Yanu. So they vote him out because of injury and vibes. <laughs> and then I said that his ally was on fire with Jeff Probst and his enemy oh. was his shoulder. Right. Cause I think like the hot take he gave me while I was out there was like that he loves on fire with Jeff Probst, which yeah. I guess it is kind of a hot take amongst like the hardcore survivor fandom, <laughs> but maybe not in the way that he realizes. It's kind of like rude for him to say that though, to be like, yeah, it's all, hot take that on fire yeah, jump ropes is good <laughs> that's so mean he's amazing uh, hot take one bonfire <laughs> yeah exactly oh yeah no. like what's the implication there uh, yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> so throwing shade that's amazing so I, and in the typical Banu way, it's like completely unintentional, right? He's like, oh, I didn't mean to actually oh, yeah. insult this podcast. Was that bad? Should I, mm -hmm. I, I love that by the way. The yeah. Was with that like, bad? Yeah. With the uh, mom, I threw up energy of him like coming back yeah. and being like, uh, yeah, <laughs> something about that. And then Tiffany saying how, uh, if she voted off Kenzie instead of Banu, she would have thrown herself into the ocean. Head first into the ocean. <laughs> Like, that's what this cast is. Like, they're all wild, dramatic people, which is just incredible for television's sake. Mm -hmm. So good. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, that's Tiffany's just delivering this season for me. I think she's hilarious. <laughs> she honestly is. Like, I feel bad that she has to be on such a disaster tribe, but I think she's, like, the perfect person to respond to it. Like yeah. between her uh, talking down Q's mystique by being like, everyone else is listening to him. I'm not. And then as we mentioned this episode where she's basically just like, oh man, well, I thought I'd be trying to get rid of one of my closest allies to save somebody, but that somebody just went and told everyone else in the game, my closest ally. So whoopsie doodles. <sighs> we'll make that mistake Oof. again. Oof. Oof. God. So bad. 
I'm like anxious to see the like recovery front of like, if there's going to be like any backlash about that, like if they all make merge and if Liz and um, who else is there? Ben. Liz and Ben. Yeah. Oh my God. Liz, Ben and Bono. <laughs> Amazing. You can't make this shit up. It was so good. Um, yeah, I wonder if there's going to be any. Uh, I'm just curious how that plays out with Bonu spilling the beans about them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, my prediction for Bonu was um, similarly not as lofty. I did have him going pre jury. I said that Bonu's upfront nature at Tribal Council will come back to bite him immediately as he is perceived as not being able to keep a secret. Um, I said his overactive physical responses to everything will make him the gift king of Survivor 46. I'm not sure about that. I, and it's only been four episodes, but I'm not sure if we have a gift king yet. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see several more acronyms from him a la Bent. I forgot about Bent, which was, uh, what was it? Beyond Excited, Nervous, and oh, no, Terrified? I forgot. I don't what remember. Yeah. That's what he told that me weird. he was, which was uh, quite hilarious considering that, yeah, I think that he certainly got bent a lot and bent a lot of people out of shape. Let me just check really quickly. It is be beyond excited, nervous, and thrilled. Thrilled. Oh. Yeah, yeah, of course he would thrilled be terrified. Should be terrified in that. <laughs> I think yeah. we should be terrified of him. That's how everyone, yeah, should, be. Yeah. everyone <laughs> should be feeling bent. He should be the bender. Uh, but I said he'd come up with several more acronym acronyms such as askew, and kink. I don't think we got that far, unfortunately, for him to come up with any mm. more Banuisms. When Yano loses again, Jess is in the crosshairs. Feeling bad, Banu plays from his heart and tells her that gets on the nerves of the other three who decide to blindside him for his inability yeah. to bear his heart rather than keep things close to his chest. Uh, and I said his closest ally would be Kenzie and his enemy would be Tiffany. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, Kendra, uh, Liana and I did not necessarily have the highest goals for Mr. Banu, but between the two of us, I guess, who was more right on the money, in your opinion? Ooh. I'm going to go with... Liana, you're just looking at me like... <laughs> 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 That's the freaking Maria. You just got Maria. I, go. try. I did just get Maria. A hundred percent. I'm like, is this a link ski belt? I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. No, I think um, both, I mean, you guys were both pretty, pretty on point, but Mike Bloom, you could take it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Validation. Leon and your mind tricks will only get you so far. <laughs> the Sucks. truth will set you free. <laughs> but yeah, I, okay. I, 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 I do feel bad that uh, I think Banu was definitely like, it was one of those things. And even throughout the season, that's like, if he makes it to the merge. Dayenu. That's great for entertainment's sake, but I think, unfortunately, just from like a, a breakdown perspective to the point that he might have a literal breakdown, or unfortunately was not written in the stars as Banu has been. Yeah. And I also, I kind of low-key love that as well, that Banu, in true dramatic fashion, the one-man show that he did in that entire scene sits down. First off, when he's like, Kenzie says, are you okay? And he goes, no, here. And hands her the coconut and awkwardly walks away to then sit down and be like, I'm not angry at you. I'm angry at him. Why would you put me on this if you knew I couldn't take it? Like, so good. So over the top. But again, very Michael Scott. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Michael he Scott. Would it's on. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, this is not the last we're going to see of Bono, at least for today's podcast, because our activity for the week is buff or snuff. And you know, Bono has got to be there with some of his looks. So let's go through some of the outfits from this season of Survivor. And Ooh. we are starting, of course with Banu. So we're going to talk about his Be Kind t-shirt. We're going to give it a buff, meaning that we like it, or a snuff, meaning that we don't like it, and we're voting it out of buffer snuff. So Mike, 
you had requested this. Yeah. I mean, I already had it on my list, but of course you requested it as well. So I want to go to you first for your thoughts on Bonnie's Be Kind t-shirt. Yeah, let's rewind and talk about Be Kind here. Uh, because talk about a time when uh, Jeff Probst did lie to the castaways, Mariah. Uh, I mean, I cannot think of a more incredibly ironic t-shirt in Survivor history. Yeah. Mike White came close with like, uh, why can't we be friends? But like... Uh, at the same time, like that felt more more emblematic of the game. The fact that this man is it's tough to like call him kind, to be completely honest. Like, I don't think he ever did anything incredibly unkind. The most unkind thing he did was probably like yell at Jess in the moment during that challenge, but everyone was apparently yelling at everybody. Yeah. But I, I kind of love the implied message. It's sort of like him walking into Survivor with a pin that says, it's my birthday. I'm like, please be kind to me. Here's the message. Like, go easy on me, please. I know you're going to be mad at certain points. I get it. It comes with the territory. I, I kind of love that, uh, that irony in it, right? That initially it was supposed to be external of, hey, everyone should be kind to everybody. Come on. The world has enough negativity in it. But to me, the message that came through at the end with this shirt was like, Come on, all. Can you can you give me a little bit of grace here? So I'm gonna buff it for that for that reason. Okay. For just the beautiful writing of it. Kendra, what about you? I also feel the same way. It's so ironic. Like if I showed up to the beach with somebody who has a be kind shirt, I'm like, well, one, you probably wear your heart on your sleeve a little bit. Um, but I think it's also just funny. Like, I would just think it's hilarious. Like, I would never think to wear like a be kind shirt on, like, even though like kindness is important to me, but like you're, this is the one you picked. This is what you picked to be out here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're going to buff it because I'm just like, it would make me laugh out there. And it makes me laugh now. And I think the fact that it's Banu wearing it too, when yeah. he's been like embroiled in this whole, like, oh, it's too much Banu. And yet if you're complaining about him, he's just wearing a big be kind shirt. So it's like the juxtaposition between uh, those two things is really funny to me. 100%. I, if I were to go out into Survivor, I think I would choose a shirt that says it's my first day just for that mm. reason, right? Of like, sorry, rookie mistake. It's my first day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, maybe that should be a new oh strategy. Like survivors should be wearing t-shirts with specific messages and you can like think about what you would want to convey. Like if you want to be like, be just like chilling. But like, I'm with her. Know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, I love that. Yeah. Or I'm with stupid. <laughs> it's an arrow pointing at her yeah. face. Like, yeah. Like a like beach side like t shirt stand. <laughs> just, that should be your uniform. Everybody needs to get like a stupid. Uh, I love it. I'm with stupid. That's what mine would be. And I'd always make sure to shift around and line up to be next to the say, person. You wouldn't would just, would just sit next to Bruce the entire time? Ah, uh, no. I would have to, no, not Bruce. Not Bruce. <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. Bruce. I love him so much. <laughs> Be kind. Yeah, no, uh, I'm also <laughs> buffing this. I love it. Uh, and on a similar note, we're going to stick with Banu for the next look. Oh, my God. When the man walked out in his sweater, Kendra, I loved this. With it. I am upset. I'm like, it's giving like French Nordic fashion week. Like I was like in the attitude, like the little pout in his face. I literally like lost my mind when I saw Banu wearing this sweater. It is like the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like he knew what he was doing. And I love like the off red color for the, for the shirt, like the faded red, mm -hmm. faded red for the um, sweater. It's just like, it's giving, it's giving. Mm -hmm. um, and it's adorable. Yeah. It's I, I mean, listen, we're, we're adorable. always, a, we're always appreciative of the like the long sleeve wear as I'm sure you all are out there on the island considering how much of a hot commodity it is, how cold it is at night. I mean, this is also yeah. Banu in a nutshell as well considering look at the patterns. There is so much going on. Yeah. Arguably too much. There's like diamonds along the arm. There's little DNA double helixes going down the sort of like pectoral muscles. There's the stripes along the neck. Like this is 
almost like Bob like, probably designed it himself of like, give me every single pattern you have and yeah. throw it onto one garment and I will wear it. I also love as well that like Banu is probably the one who has shown like the most outward emotion on this tribe, if not the whole game. And he has been wearing red in both of these pieces that we know, which is interesting because it is the purple tribe. So it's not like he's decked out in purple the entire time. But I love that both of these pieces show that like uh, maybe he was a bit of a walking red flag considering the color choice of garb he's clad in. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. He is. Yeah, I didn't think about that. He's a fashionable. Like, I'm just like, I can imagine him just like putting this on before going, like getting his wardrobe ready and just being like, like checking himself out and being like, I look good in this. Like, I'm about to make a statement on this beach. Like, hmm. I feel like he feels himself in this. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Yeah, it's definitely a buff. As soon as you see, it's one of those mode things that like, where did he get this? When did he have this? Like, like you see it in episode three. It's just like, <gasps> Banu. Banu, like, Giving. yeah, where did you get, like, honestly, where did you get this? Who, who even makes this? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <really? laughs> and I, and I would imagine that if I were Bono, you could leverage this a bit. You could be like, I, I'm in so much trouble. I will give this away to you if you keep me. Mm -hmm. But kind of knowing Bono, he probably would have promised it to Jeff Probst. And if he had been kept anyway, like, oh, he's my guru. He can wear my pullover. And they're like, damn it, Bono. We keep giving you all this slack. And you just keep cutting the rope. Absolutely. He should have practiced with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're sticking with Yanu. This is Tiffany's look. So Tiffany has this matching set of like casual artistic blazer shorts sort of combo that's going on here. Very graphic, very artistic. I feel like it definitely fits her whole vibe, Mike. Um, I'm gonna snuff it because wow. she looks like fruit stripe gum and i don't want That's people to saying. and i don't want people <laughs> to dress up like food out there i don't want to live that cartoon fantasy of i'm starving and i visualize someone else as a cheeseburger i don't want that where i'm starving you know uh i then i'd have to shovel some more ants in my mouth and just like think of more bygone times so i i kind of want to snuff it in this moment though i would love to see it come back i feel like it hasn't come back since the marooning hmm yeah, I've seen her wearing like bit pieces sometimes here and there. She has this new pair of pants in this episode that I really love, but I couldn't get a good picture of, so I settled on the the matching set instead. But I I think it's fun. I think it's a lot of it's it's big, it's bold, it's cute. But I see that I see the the gum comparison, <laughs> which <laughs> might get her in trouble. Yeah, the and gum. It's like. Yeah. Yeah, I'm nervous about the gum because it's like the flavor doesn't last long. And so you mm. don't want to bring in the energy of I'm not going to last long. But, you know, mm. as soon as you brought up the gum, I was like, I saw it immediately. And like, we don't need that energy with us out there. We need to be like what, uh, five gum. You need to be five gum, Tiffany. You don't need to be uh, zebra gum. But I actually love the look. Um yeah, the pink and the blue. It's like, I'm not going to do purple. I'm not going to do the red and blue together. I'm going to do the pink and I'm going to do the blue because that is purple. I could see like her creative artist brain moving, but I feel like it really gives us like a look up to like who she is. Also, yeah. wait, I'm, I'm looking behind Tiffany in both pictures. Does Bondu have another <laughs> sweater? <laughs> yeah. And he wears it in my favorite way to wear them, which is... Just like I do it ironically, I like to pretend I'm rich. <laughs> like, like in in like Cape Cod and in Nantucket, like all the people like to wear their things like this, <laughs> and I like to do that sometimes and pretend I'm rich. I won the million. Anyway, really sincerely, I do believe we've seen Liz dress that way out on the island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, uh, that's amazing! I'm uh, she, I'm she's gone to Nantucket. She knows. Well, let's talk about Liz because I've sort of put together an ensemble <laughs> of Liz. This There's is like multiple... steal that look for Liz. Yes, so I have yes. the Target Pride collection shirt thing with the like this uh, rainbow all the way across. We have her rainbow glasses, and then we have her oversized sweater here. So we're really going for this like rainbow ensemble look from Liz, sort of putting things all together. Kendra, like, 
what do you think of what do you think about this? Ooh. Um. <laughs> okay, maybe you do belong on Nami, because you just broke out into a gospel number. <laughs> um i do belong on nami get me out there i know it's done but like i would i would love to to make up songs with them um yeah uh fun i hate it um no i don't hate it <laughs> um it's just like i guess i guess it's like her thing but like i feel like mariah's rainbow so we've had like a couple rainbow people i feel like mariah's rainbow like like this is i guess a different like this is like 90s like jock vibe which is cool it's like practical for survivor so i like the like i, I like mixing the practicality with the rainbow um would i and i know she's like fresh princess of email so like we like to make the references so i feel like it matches her However, like I would never. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's interesting because like I, I mean you're going on to the show right under the pretense of like these clothes yeah. are gonna get utterly destroyed. But I love yeah. that for someone who again is sort of touting the amount of money that she makes back at home that she kind of dresses like she's an extra in a Richard Linklater film from 1977 yeah. between like the you know uh monotone random rainbow stripe across the chest between like the baggy grandma sweater that kind of looks like she threw all the yarn together and just kind of knitted something up for for your birthday it's i i have to admire the matching though mm. like the fact that it is yeah. as coordinated as you can is a really great effort i should say i might i don't know I, I i'm gonna buff it because also i feel like these two lizzes are such completely different lizzes and i feel like if you're someone who's giving something completely yeah. different based on just like a piece of outerwear versus a mm -hmm. t-shirt like i kind of like the versatility of the wardrobe yeah. you know mm -hmm. yeah i feel I like means nothing no. no, no, no. I'm going to stuff it too. I think <laughs> I like the sweater. The sweater I like, but I'm just, I don't know. I don't really like the other shirt and the glasses are just distracting. They're cute, but I don't know. They're really distracting to me. I don't know why. I, 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 I can't explain it. There's no logical explanation at all whatsoever. So I think it's the totality, Same. like the overall aesthetics. It's not my fave, but the sweat, the big grandma sweater. Yeah. I'm actually kind of cool with throwing all the yarn together and just vibing. Yeah, I, I will say Liz, I think, is one of my favorite tertiary characters of Survivor 46 so far. Where we spoke about, obviously, the lion share going mm -hmm. to Yanu and mainly Banu that like we haven't really got a lot of time with the other tribes. I kind of love just the random Liz moments every episode. Like this episode, mm -hmm. it got uh we got tagged in it on Twitter, mm -hmm. Leon. I'm not sure if you saw, but. When she yeah. was when they did the ceremonial jump into the water, Liz pops up and her buff is just in covering the entire upper half of her face. <laughs> so she's just swimming blindly through the ocean. Just like there's all these random Liz moments that honestly yeah, I, I really it's this. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. <laughs> Poor Liz. <laughs> Why is it so funny? I want to make this my profile picture on Twitter. Liz, I love you. Uh, Emily's out. You're in, baby. God. I love it. I know. I, uh, okay. I love it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, let's actually, so let's stick with a theme. So the rainbow theme from Liz, let's go to the sunflower theme from Tevin because Ooh. I kind of didn't realize that he was also doing a, a, a theme. He's got the sunflower yellow t-shirt. And then he also has the shirt that at least I also have not seen since the marooning. So I don't know, or I haven't paid attention to it, but the, he has another button up sunflower shirt, Mike. Mm, I mean... As someone who is always in full bloom, I have to love the shout out to a flower. And I feel like the sunflower, I think it, it bears multiple reasonings, right? Because we find out how important his father is to him in this episode. And so he truly is a sunflower, if Aww. you will. Uh, so I think that it also Aww. just represents the, the brightness, the fact that he takes in so much light and is able to give it out as well. 
I miss that shirt. I feel like there's so many marooning outfits that have just gone away with the marooning. Maybe the rain on the first day just like, and the mud just utterly destroyed them beyond repair. So I like the the hint of it. I mean, I like mm-hmm. the button down so much more than the t-shirt, but for thematicness, I'm going to have to give it a buff. Mm. Yeah. Kendra, what do you think? It's going to be a buff from me. I love sunflowers. I have a sunflower tattoo and I think it just like really fits with his personality. And it's just like sunflowers are like what you like imagine like on a happy day. It's like, oh, I'm bright. I'm here. I'm tall. I'm doing my thing. I'm standing tall. I'm standing strong. I'm shining outwards. And like that is definitely Tevin. I also just wanted to like note his um his back a little bit of his backstory. I thought that was just so well done. I, I think know. it was a, such a beautiful moment. And I really loved that and it just like it really struck a chord in me because it's just like yeah you don't have much time to like be alone and like it's crazy how like the smallest things can just make you think of like your loved ones and your people and like i just thought that was really beautifully done and yeah. um like the way they edited it and just like it was just special to share that moment with him and so yeah buffing the and i like the yellow beads like i love tevin's look for sure. I mm-hmm. totally co-sign uh, obviously getting to find out about his backstory because it's so interesting to have him view this experience through that lens because he found out that he was going to be playing Survivor like a couple weeks after his father had passed away. And so I sure. feel like my head canon is that throughout this entire time, I think he has kind of been compartmentalizing a lot of this through that lens of like, almost not necessarily a door closes a window opens but sort of this idea of like he vocalized this to me at least that he felt this was sort of a sign from his dad to go do this to take this adventure of a lifetime by the horns and not let it go and truly take in as much sunlight and nutrients and water as you can and grow as tall as you possibly can over 26 days and so I love that it got vocalized here. To your point, Kendra, I love how seamlessly it was edited in. You know, it didn't necessarily, they've done a better job of that starting in like 44, but I love that it wasn't necessarily like shoehorned in Tevin saying, I stubbed my toe today and it made me think of my father. That it really segued beautifully from him, you know, them winning the fish and him wanting to clean it, which was, you know, one of the things he used to do with his dad and getting to also connect with him because we haven't really seen a lot of him in the past couple weeks. I feel like we got, some beautiful footage from a beautiful person. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that's the biggest thing for me is that it was well integrated because, you know, the, the story is like, you want there to be a relevance to why we're learning this about him. And it was like perfect with the fish tie in and everything for that. So yeah, I'm, I love the story, love the look, definitely a buff for me. Yay. Okay, let's move on. So this is, um okay, the, the item here. So it's a picture of Ben and a picture of Charlie, but it's specifically supposed to highlight the like leather, faux leather vest. Thing. Yes, the sisterhood but, of the traveling vest. Yes. yes. So it, I did not notice it until it was on Charlie where he's looking like a little Indiana Jones out there hunting for the idol, but it's actually Ben's leather vest. So... I okay. This is tough because like the leather vest itself on Char- on Charlie, I'm gonna buff, but I'm gonna snuff it on Ben. That I just love the way that. Her. Yeah, like I love it. the way that Charlie accessorized. <laughs> um, so but I buff for Charlie for sure. Like it's giving Indiana Jones. That's like the first thing I thought of. I love it. Um, and then. then <laughs> I want to see Ben. I don't like there's, I feel like there should have been some contrast. Like it looks just kind of like a vest. Like, like, I never around. I'm like, like, it looks cool. It looks really cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ben, <laughs> it looks like he, I guess maybe I can't like see it right away, but like, just like the way it's like a little too snug and form fitting. It's like, are we about to like go to like a cabaret? Are you like gonna do like, are you like a dominate? Like it's giving, um, like, I don't know. Too it's giving something. <laughs> yeah. Like, or not like cabaret, but like, just like thinking like the tight leather. It's like, Ooh, I know he's a sh- I think he's trying to do like the rock and roll like leather look, but I just think it looks like cool on Charlie and 
Yeah, it's going to be a snuff for me for Belle. Mm -hmm. uh so first off uh charlie is definitely jim right for making office comparisons <laughs> yeah the look yeah. at the camera kind of thing yeah I and mean, like there's the straight <laughs> man quite literally but like yeah it feels like he's as we've said it before from the beginning right liana that like he seems to be one of the only normal ones in this cast we say as he yells taylor swift jumping yeah. off of an obstacle in a challenge <laughs> Yeah, I might need to take that back, but I mean, for now, sure. <laughs> you say Charlie's giving Indiana Jones. I more so think Charlie looks like he's about to pick up a trombone and play something by Dizzy Gillespie. Like, he has very much that feeling to me, or like, he's about to front his own panic at the disco cover band. Oh. Like, this this oh look that God. he has going on. Uh, whereas Ben is maybe going for that different style. I agree that, like, I... Maybe because we're used to Ben wearing overalls. Like, I did not initially look at it as two pieces initially, and it doesn't necessarily match though i think the vest and the lack of shirt is probably going with what kendra is saying right of like mm -hmm. the hardcore rocker uh they're trying to try to make most skin show but not all of it there's still some secrets that they can keep i'm yeah. i'm gonna buff it uh purely for the idea of like this is now an item that has been not even widely circulated it just seems like from what we saw in the premiere ben said oh dude this looks good on you this rocks and charlie has worn it ever since this is not any sort of like hey we're sharing this ben shows his charitability by just giving mm -hmm. this item away within the first day of playing which i absolutely love uh you can win a million dollars a million hearts and one vest evidently so i'm gonna bump this <laughs> okay our next item with two more uh, things to talk about and these are more accessories than they are like main pieces. And so this is starting with Tim's unique interpretation of wearing the buff. Now, Kendra, how did he do this? <laughs> Explain this to me. I love it. I am upset. I'm like, oh, I should have had my buff with me. I should have worn it like Tim. I love it. So I'm like, do I go get my buff right now? Um, I think, yeah, it's like a bow tie. I I tried, I like to do, I tried to do that once, but yeah, I think he really just stretched it out. Give it a little bow tie. I love the look. It's a little um, it's reminiscent of Tupac Shakur, which I really love. Um, and it's also it's not only like Tupac with the bandana, but it's also like a little feminine too. Mm. And I know there was like a little backlash of like, oh, you know, only know two types of ladies. A wife and a grandma, whatever the internet was saying about him then. But like, I like it. It shows kind of like, it's like this subtle way of like seeing it, um, Tim's fun side. And I 100% buff the buff. Uh, I, I like how unconventional it is. Uh, and I mm -hmm. do agree. I, I, I actually like the, the Tim Pock comparison, perhaps, of like, yes. we love that 46 seasons in, there's brand new ways to wear buffs. I will say what I see. This is perhaps a Rorschach test through the buff. Um, I also see head wound. I looked at like here's the dressing mm. of the of the the gash on the side of his head. And look, in an era where we are questioning medical practices on Survivor, I don't want Dr. Will coming over, pulling Tim from the game, causing more havoc, allowing other beware advantages to get lost. So I'm gonna have to snuff it if it gives off the implication that Tim is wounded in any way. Oh <laughs> yeah. That's just you, I think. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> I don't think anybody else is thinking that. I I give it a buff. I think it's so cute. I love that it's unique. And I, I yeah, I don't know. He must have like stretched it out, Kendra. Because I'm like, there's not like for the amount of fabric. Like I understand. Well, wait, we found out in that opening challenge night. of your season, Kendra, right? That buffs can be very, very stretchy. <laughs> yes. Do we know that I was the one to hack that? Does the world know that? No, oh, please do take tell. Credit. Oh, oh my god! So Brando afterwards, like Kendra, you hacked that challenge because I was the one who brought Bruce up. It was never shown. I was so upset. I was like, they and they're showing that Lulu was in it. It was my idea first. I was so mad at that first episode. I was like, I didn't get my secret visit to Lulu. I didn't get my buff hack. Yeah, because I was trying to grab Bruce up, and then I had my buff around my wrist already and i go just grab my buff and then we started bringing people up with the buffs anyways lulu did not come up with that i came up with that all right there we go anyways the yeah, so it's all over it's all over yes there are they're super stretchy um they're amazing and i can see how yeah no it is possible obviously he did it but um mm -hmm. yeah i was always trying to figure out new ways to wear it because it's just like a fun 
it's a fun thing to think about up there. I liked yeah. to do the bow on the, mm -hmm. the bun. That was probably my favorite. Yeah. That's cute. Anyway. Okay, our last accessory to talk about today is the backpacks. Okay, oh, and the main okay. reason I bring this up is specifically because of this shot from the premiere with uh, the uh, with Purple Tribe with Yanu. It's the way Q and Jelinski are holding <laughs> the backpacks for me. Like they are kindergartners <laughs> on the first day of school, just like double strapping it, holding on, being like cute little kids. So that's the main reason why I'm calling it out. Cause you know, we're like we the switch from the single shoulder bag to the backpack. So now we're here rocking the backpack. Oh man, I adore Jelinski. But right now, he looks like if I could find the tallest locker I could, it'd be so easy to stop it. Like, just oh. the way he's like, boop -a -doo. I mean, it, and this is also him declaring with his full chest that seven means several. So, like, this is the confidence that he walks in with. I know you didn't talk about the Banu in this where so he looks, quote unquote, normal, but he does also do this when he's coming back from the journey. I remember him double strapping the backpack and it being like walking home from school like he had a bad day. So, I, yeah, I kind of love it. I don't think we've really paid attention to it, but I guess, mm. I don't know if they started recently coloring the straps, but and maybe it's just the vibrancy of the purple or the fact that, yeah, they're like hiking them up and ready to go. I'm going to buff it. Why the hell not? Listen, listen. All right. Yeah. Single strap in it might be the cool, fun thing to do. You know, it's not cool. Sciatica, scoliosis, <laughs> that wreaked havoc on our <laughs> skeletal muscular system throughout our time in middle school and high school. So I value my back. I'm giving myself a backbone and I am buffing the two strap method. Kendra, what, uh, what were your, uh, what your, back your backs were backpacks too, right? No, we had, um, no, they were more, um, like satchels. They were one strap. Okay. No. Okay. Single strap. I didn't even realize that they had backpacks. I wish we had backpacks. Also, I'm in such a mood right now because I never knew that doing the double strap made me not cool. I d didn't catch that memo. And I have a backpack that I use every day. And I walking down the street with my backpack. Um, yeah. But I think it is just, yeah, that's. Okay, I need to think about life a little bit after this. Um, no, it's fine. It's, it's like, <laughs> no, it's, never like it's like the big, the big Bang Theory, it, right? Like made those types of things cool now. Oh God, never, never caught the memo on that. But um, I think they look adorable. Jess also looks like she is ready for school. Maybe it's her first day. <laughs> she, she's a little shy, um, and I just like looking at their body language in this one. Um, Jelinski, he's going in a locker for sure. Um, and no, I'm joking. I love Jelinski. <laughs> He's so funny. But yeah, I buff the the purple, like the, we're ready. Like, I love it. I think it's adorable. Buff. I buff it too. I, I'm also, I'm, I'm a backpack girly to this day. I have a backpack for my bag because I also <laughs> like got to protect my skeletal muscular system. We're protecting our, our bones. So yeah, so I'm i uh, I'm a huge fan of this and I love that they have backpacks. I hope that they should always get backpacks. I'm here for backpacks. Backpacks are like the superior bag because you wear them on your back. You can carry a lot more stuff. You're not your hands are free. I'm so pro backpack. So yes, I buff this. Absolutely. Perfect. Now the question, the yeah. question is we're going to have to observe who's one strap in it moving forward. Cause like, I think that says something personally, people talk about right? body language, who's, talk confident. About contact, who's confident, exactly. Who thinks they're the coolest kid on the beach and they're who about to get they're running the street. There yep. Go, exactly. Absolutely. And also I'm nervous. Do they, are they adjustable? Um, like Ooh, the straps, you know, I hope that they're able to, to form it to their back. Otherwise, you know, maybe that's why Jelinski is, is holding it like that. Cause I know it's really important for my backpack to fit correctly on my back and get nervous when it doesn't. And mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I'm just thinking about yeah, that. I want to know. I'm I'm hoping they have these. It looks like there's like a little adjustable piece, but you never know. No, this Might is the new era, Liana. Know. You got to make do with what you've got. Oh, hey, yeah. Yadu, you got to earn it. Yadu has to earn their survivor. straps. 
<laughs> Next <laughs> reward. I got you. <laughs> you know the new era's gone broke when the next one they have to play for adjustable straps on their backpacks. Yeah. It's amazing. Okay. Amazing. Well, great. That was all of Buff or Snuff. Oh my god. I think god. that there were some really truly amazing outfits. I lo- I love this cast. It's so yeah. good. It's it's a, a, an yeah. amazing <laughs> wardrobe for an amazing cast. And uh, to be accommodated for an amazing guest as well, Kendra. Uh, we're going to shine the spotlight on you for one last thing. Every week on the B&B, we'd like to give the time to our guests to also give time to a charity or cause that is important to them. What would you like to highlight this week? Oh, gosh. It started breaking up a little bit. I'm in the jungle. Ah, oh, are we still here? We're still here. Yeah. Well, if you want a charity away. Okay. No, it's back. Okay. There's two things I want to talk about. First of all, um, I wonder if this ever has crossed anyone's mind, but it definitely has crossed my mind. Um, are When is Survivor the musical going to happen? And is Ooh. Jeff going to use this new song from NAMI in the musical? Like, that's all I've been thinking about the past 24 hours, like prepping for this podcast. I'm like, can I just talk about Survivor the musical and who's going to oh, play yeah. Jeff? Yeah. Oh, who's going to play like, Jeff? I mean, that's interesting. Is Jeff going to be... play Jeff? I don't. I don't no. know if Jeff would play Jeff. I think you have to get like, um, oh God, his name is at the tip of my tongue. I have to look him up now. Uh, Stephen Pasquale. And like, would it, and I was like, oh my God, yes. And then I was Madison like, County okay, it would be TV. Survivor the Musical. Heroes versus Villains. It would be based on that. Mm-hmm on that season i think i think that would be the best to turn into a musical um and that's just all i've been thinking about because i was listening to on fire yesterday and jeff is just like obsessed with the musical score and like the you know they're talking about it and i was just like when is when is somebody gonna uh make survivor the musical like it really should have already happened i would like to play jerry manthe oh Um, yes yes Love the musical. Okay. Second thing, the um, the charity that I would like to um, spotlight, especially having moved to Hawaii and moved to Maui, Maui Strong is still looking for donations. Um, There is a lot of, um, yeah, upheaval upheaval and just a lot of trauma that has happened to this land since the Lahaina fires in um, August of 2023. And there are still people like living in hotel rooms and there's just a lot happening over here. And that is a really good foundation to donate money, to help families get back on their feet and also to help le- legislation um, be passed. So pe- like what's happening is, you know, all these millionaires are co- all these survivor winners. No, I'm just joking. Um, all these millionaires are coming in, billionaires are coming in and buying these um, ancestral lands out from under um, the Lahaina peoples. And it's just really displaced a lot of people um, and community. And they are definitely still looking for support. And I don't think it's talked about enough. Um, So that is definitely just like being here always, especially if having moved here, I feel the need to, um, and the just like the, responsibility to speak up about it and also donate whenever I can and go volunteer my time because it is just yeah I drove through that area for the first time a week ago that was like my one of my favorite parts of the island as many people love that area and Mm -hmm. it is really really sad so I'm just always like holding Maui in my heart I love it here I'm so grateful to be here but I also want to use whatever small little platform I have and big mouth that I have to spread awareness that this is still an issue going on and to, yeah, just bring some light and, and share, let's share resources. Let's help each other. Let's, you know, honor, like, especially like ancestral lands where there has been colonization coming in, especially like as a white person coming into this land that, um, I just do feel this like, big responsibility to um be of action of uh, to this mm. land so yeah that's what i yeah. would like to highlight yeah thank you for highlighting that obviously uh, as those of us that are on a mainland which is quite literally dealing with issues an island away i think it's always a great reminder of some very harrowing personal things that have 
changed so many lives in the past couple years or so and it's always good to draw attention to it so thank you kendra for not only spotlighting that but taking the time out of your jungle time to come out from under your mosquito net and and talk with us about survivor 46 this was such a great time Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. You kind of were bubbling out there the last minute, but I think I got everything you said. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, it was you're going to see on the camera. Yeah. Yeah. All okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me. You guys are a blast. And yeah, I can't wait for the I can't wait for this season to start stirring up. I'm really excited for next episode. Yeah, mm -hmm. I am as well. I, I had fun with Banu. Personally, I know that he was not everyone's cup of tea, but there was a lot of stuff I, I enjoyed out of him, even though maybe it was a bit too much time dedicated to him. But as we've talked about, I'm excited to hopefully have Yanu win some more stuff besides fish that they'll give up, and we'll see some more action from these other tribes. Kendra, if people want to follow you on social media, where can they do so? You can follow me um, at underscore Kendra Ruthless, and you can also check out uh, my website. Happy to be here. I do astrology readings. I do Survivor X astrology readings, and we look at your birth chart and we talk about what type of player you would be out there. And if you're in the process of applying, it's also a really good resource to uh, talk about what it would look like if you were actually out there. So um, hit me up. That's probably been like my favorite thing that I've been doing. And it's a really, really good time. And it gives you some behind the scenes insight into like what your survivor journey would look like. So that's where you can find me and on Twitter at Ken. So that's where I'm at. Uh, by the way, this is the picture of the guy uh, that I think played Jeff Probst. I think I think it works, especially with like the mullet Jeff Probst look. I feel like it. Uh, oh, I didn't even share it. Here we go. <laughs> it's like, what, there what? we go. That's, that's I like it. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, is it you? I'm yeah. like, is it you, Mike? Yeah. Are you the one? Oh, yeah, someone oh my God. Yes, it's Jeff. Uh, no, it would, I would have to. Yeah, play here's the one I have about. I'm going to show you the picture. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's... Oh, my God. Go. Yes. Oh, I. Somebody's gonna okay. If somebody makes Survivor the musical, just let me know. I just want to see it and maybe play Jerry if it's like heroes versus villains. There we go. And now you just gave <laughs> all. all the means that we can contact you, Liana. What about you? What would you like to plug? Yeah, well, you can follow me on Twitter at Liana R H A P. Talking about Drag Race, we just recorded for this um, last episode for season sixteen, and then also uh, Puy and I are talking about the Mass Singer. So check out either of those in their individual feeds or on the Reality TV or Hop Ups feed. Uh, you can follow her at Liana RHAP, and you can follow me at a Mike Bloom type. Of course, I had the pleasure of talking with Banu, and you know, it, it was a conversation with Banu. You, you take what he gave you, and he gave us so, so much, both on the screen and in my interview as well. He gave a lot of perspective as to how he was feeling going into that day of sort of mourning, uh, what happened on the journey, his overall reaction to the Yanu tribe, and what he ultimately takes away from it, he tells a, a really nice story about a seven-year-old fan or the, the daughter, I think, of a fan who reacted to his time on the show that I think left him in a really good space. I know that the internet uh, varied in terms of its own kindness, ironically enough, to Banu, but his head is in a really good place, I think, walking away from this, which is always okay. good to hear. So I was really happy to talk with him. Uh, I am also doing coverage of The Amazing Race, which continued on this week. Uh, we officially kicked off our coverage with some alumni of The Amazing Race, myself and Jess. If you're checking that out, that was a very, very fun podcast in particular, covering some stuff on Posha Recaps as well as we're talking about the top 10 TV shows of the past 10 years. I do not know what's going to be on there, but I am excited to talk about great TV that has existed in a decade of great TV. I'm one thing I'll tease if you're a fan of Top Chef, which came back this past week. Uh, I have an exclusive interview coming out tomorrow that is uh, a very, very big. So I hope people are able to check it out. Very grateful and happy for everything I get to do and that I get to uh, parade out to everybody, ironically enough, at a Mike Bloom type. But next week, the parade keeps on marching as we will talk through episode five of survivor 46 was this truly the first chapter of the season have we moved on to a new stage of the game we shall see but we'll have not one but two guests to break it all down this has been the messiest season to end all seasons i think it's only appropriate that we have the mess magnets on themselves kirsten McKenna and sasha joseph to break down episode five 
of Survivor 46. Thank you all so much for listening. We are open, willing, able, receptive to any and all games you might have for us to play. You can reach out to us, rhapbnb at gmail.com or hashtag rhapbnb on social media. Leon and I will take any suggestions. We will take any walkthroughs a la Q with Banu. We will follow your lead. Just let us know any ideas you might have, and we will bring them to the table. That's going to do it for this week on the b b Thanks to the entire RHAP team behind the scenes for putting all this together for your listening and viewing pleasure, and for River from America for his fantastic theme song. Next week, we'll be back with Kirsten McKinnis and Sasha Joseph to break down Episode 5 of Survivor 46. Until next time, everybody, we'll check you out at your next day.